The Book of First Chronicles, Chapter 1 From Adam to Noah's Sons The descendants of Adam were Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah. The sons of Noah were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Descendants of Japheth The descendants of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, and Tiras. The descendants of Gomer were Ashkenaz, Ripheth, and Togarma. The descendants of Javan were Elisha, Tarshish, Kittim, and Rodanim. Descendants of Ham The descendants of Ham were Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Cain. The descendants of Cush were Seba, Havala, Sabta, Ra'ama, and Sabtaka. The descendants of Ra'ama were Sheba and Dedan. Cush was also the ancestor of Nimrod, who was the first heroic warrior on earth. Mizraim was the ancestor of the Ludites, Anamites, Lehabites, Naphtaites, Pathrasites, Cashalites, and the Kaphtorites, from whom the Philistines came. Canaan's oldest son was Sidon, the ancestor of the Sidonians. Canaan was also the ancestor of the Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites, Girgashites, Hivites, Archites, Sinites, Arvidites, Zemorites, and Hamathites. Descendants of Shem The descendants of Shem were Elam, Asher, Arphaxad, Lud, and Aram. The descendants of Aram were Uz, Hull, Gether, and Mash. Arphaxad was the father of Shelah. Shelob was the father of Eber. Eber had two sons. The first was named Pelag, which means division. For during his lifetime, the people of the world were divided into different language groups. His brother's name was Joktan. Joktan was the ancestor of Elmodad, Sheliph, Hazarmaveth, Jera, Hadaram, Uzal, Dikla, Obal, Abimael, Sheba, Ophir, Havilah, and Jobab. All these were descendants of Joktan. So this is the family line descended from Shem, Arphaxad, Shela, Eber, Pelig, Ru, Sirug, Nahor, Tira, and Abram, later known as Abraham. Descendants of Abraham The sons of Abraham were Isaac and Ishmael. These are their genealogical records. The sons of Ishmael were Nebaioth, the oldest, Kader, Adbeel, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Hadad, Tima, Jeter, Naphish, and Kedema. These were the sons of Ishmael. The sons of Keturah, Abraham's concubine, were Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. The sons of Jokshan were Sheba and Dedan. The sons of Midian were Ephah, Epher, Hanak, Abida, and Elda. All these were descendants of Abraham through his concubine, Keturah. Descendants of Isaac. Abraham was the father of Isaac. The sons of Isaac were Esau and Israel, descendants of Esau. The sons of Esau were Eliphaz, Ruel, Jeush, Jalem, and Korah. The sons of Eliphaz were Teman, Omar, Zepho, Gatem, Kenaz, and Amalek, who was born to Timnah. The sons of Ruel were Nahath, Zerah, Shammah, and Mizah. Original Peoples of Edom the sons of Seir were Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Ana, Dishan, Ezer, and Dishan. The sons of Lotan were Horai and Heman. Lotan's sister was named Timnah. The sons of Shobal were Alvan, Manahath, Ebal, Shepho, and Onam. The sons of Zibion were Ea and Ana. The son of Ana was Dishan. The sons of Dishan were Hemdan, Eshban, Ithran, and Kiran. The sons of Ezer were Bilhan, Zeavan, and Achan. The sons of Dishan were Uz and Aaron. Rulers of Edom These are the kings who ruled in Edom before there were kings in Israel. Bela, son of Beor, who ruled from his city of Dinhaba. When Bela died, Jobab, son of Zerah, from Basra, became king. When Jobab died, Husham from the land of the Temanites became king. When Husham died, Hadad, son of Bedad, became king and ruled from the city of Avith. He was the one who destroyed the Midianite army in the land of Moab. When Hadad died, Samlah from the city of Masrika became king. 
When Samla died, Shul from the city of Rehoboth on the river became king. When Shul died, Baal Hanan, son of Akbor, became king. When Baal Hanan died, Hadad became king and ruled from the city of Paw. His wife was Mehedabel, the daughter of Matred, and granddaughter of Mezeheb. Then Hadad died. The clan leaders of Edom were Timna, Alva, Jethith, Aholabema, Elah, Penan, Kenaz, Teman, Mibzar, Magdil, and Irem. These were the clan leaders of Edom. Chapter 2 Descendants of Israel The sons of Israel were Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Dan, Joseph, Benjamin, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. Descendants of Judah Judah had three sons from Bathsheba, a Canaanite woman. Their names were Ur, Onan, and Shelah. But the Lord saw that the oldest son, Ur, was a wicked man, so he killed him. Later, Judah had twin sons from Tamar, his widowed daughter-in-law. Their names were Perez and Zerah. So Judah had five sons in all. The sons of Perez were Hezron and Hamul. The sons of Zerah were Zimri, Ethan, Heman, Calcol, and Darda, five in all. The son of Carmi, a descendant of Zimri, was Achan, who brought disaster on Israel by taking plunder that had been set apart for the Lord. The son of Ethan was Azariah. From Judah's grandson, Hezron, to David. The sons of Hezron were Jeremiel, Ram, and Caleb. Ram was the father of Amminadab. Amminadab was the father of Nashon, a leader of Judah. Nashon was the father of Solomon. Solomon was the father of Boaz. Boaz was the father of Obed. Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse's first son was Eliab. His second was Abinadab. His third was Shimei. His fourth was Nethanel. His fifth was Radai. His sixth was Azam. And his seventh was David. Their sisters were named Zuriah and Abigail. Zuriah had three sons named Abishai, Joab, and Asahel. Abigail married a man named Jether, an Ishmaelite, and they had a son named Amasa. Other Descendants of Hezron Hezron's son Caleb had sons from his wife Azuba and from Jeriath. Her sons were named Jeshur, Shobab, and Arden. After Azuba died, Caleb married Ephrathah, and they had a son named Hur. Hur was the father of Uri. Uri was the father of Bezalel. When Hezron was sixty years old, he married Gilead's sister, the daughter of Maker. They had a son named Segub. Segub was the father of Jair, who ruled twenty-three towns in the land of Gilead. But Geshur and Aram captured the towns of Jair and also took Kenath and its sixty surrounding villages. All these were descendants of Maker, the father of Gilead. Soon after Hezron died in the town of Caleb Ephrathah, his wife Abijah gave birth to a son named Asher, the father of Tekoa. Descendants of Hezron's son, Jeremiel. The sons of Jeremiel, the oldest son of Hezron, were Ram, the firstborn, Buna, Oren, Ozem, and Ahijah. Jeremiel had a second wife named Atara. She was the mother of Onam. The sons of Ram, the oldest son of Jeremiel, were Mez, Jamin, and Eker. The sons of Onam were Shimei and Jada. The sons of Shimei were Nadab and Abishur. The sons of Abishur and his wife Abihail were Aben and Molid. The sons of Nadab were Selid and Apaim. Selid died without children, but Apaim had a son named Ishai. The son of Ishai was Shishan. Shishan had a descendant named Alai. The sons of Jada, Shimei's brother, were Jether and Jonathan. Jether died without children, but Jonathan had two sons named Peleth and Zaza. These were all descendants of Jeremiel. Shishan had no sons, though he did have daughters. He also had an Egyptian servant named Jara. Shishan gave one of his daughters to be the wife of Jara, and they had a son named Edai. Edai was the father of Nathan. Nathan was the father of Zabad. Zabad was the father of Ephlol. Ephlol was the father of Obed. Obed was the father of Jehu. Jehu was the father of Azariah. Azariah was the father of Helaz. Helaz was the father of Elisa. Elisa was the father of Sismai. Sismai was the father of Shalom. Shalom was the father of Jechamiah. Jechamiah was the father of Elishama. 
descendants of Hezron's son Caleb. The descendants of Caleb, the brother of Jeremiel, included Mesha, the firstborn, who became the father of Ziph. Caleb's descendants also included the sons of Merisha, the father of Hebron. The sons of Hebron were Korah, Tapua, Rechem, and Shema. Shema was the father of Raham. Raham was the father of Jorkim. Rechem was the father of Shimei. The son of Shimei was Maon. Maon was the father of Bethzur. Caleb's concubine, Ephah, gave birth to Haran, Moza, and Gazes. Haran was the father of Gazes. The sons of Jada were Regum, Jotham, Gishan, Pelet, Ephah, and Sheaf. Another of Caleb's concubines, Maekah, gave birth to Sheber and Tirhana. She also gave birth to Sheaf, the father of Medmana, and Sheva, the father of Macbena and Gibeah. Caleb also had a daughter named Aksa. These were all descendants of Caleb. Descendants of Caleb's son, Hur. The sons of Hur, the oldest son of Caleb's wife, Ephrathah, were Shobol, the founder of kiriath Jerem, Salma, the founder of Bethlehem, and Heref, the founder of beth Gader. The descendants of Shobol, the founder of kiriath Jerem, were Heroa, half the Manahathites, and the families of kiriath Jerem, the Ithrites, Puthites, Shumathites, and Mishraites, from whom came the people of Zorah and Eshtael. The descendants of Salma were the people of Bethlehem, the Netophathites, Atrobeth Joab, the other half of the Manahathites, the Zorites, and the families of scribes living at Jabez, the Tirathites, Shimeathites, and Sukathites. All these were Kenites who descended from Hamath, the father of the family of Rechab. Chapter 3 Descendants of David These are the sons of David who were born in Hebron. The oldest was Amnon, whose mother was Ahinoam from Jezreel. The second was Daniel, whose mother was Abigail from Carmel. The third was Absalom, whose mother was Maekah, the daughter of Talmai, king of Gesher. The fourth was Adonijah, whose mother was Haggith. The fifth was Shephatiah, whose mother was Abitol. The sixth was Ithream, whose mother was Eglah, David's wife. These six sons were born to David in Hebron, where he reigned seven and a half years. Then David reigned another thirty-three years in Jerusalem. The sons born to David in Jerusalem included Shemua, Shobab, Nathan, and Solomon. Their mother was Bathsheba, the daughter of Amiel. David also had nine other sons, Ibhar, Elishua, Elpolet, Noga, Nephag, Jephiah, Elishama, Eliada, and Eliphalet. These were the sons of David, not including his sons born to his concubines. Their sister was named Tamar. Descendants of Solomon the descendants of Solomon were Rehoboam, Abijah, Asa, Jehoshaphat, Jehoram, Ahaziah, Joash, Amaziah, Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, Manasseh, Amon, and Josiah. The sons of Josiah were Johanan, the oldest, Jehoiakim, the second, Zedekiah, the third, and Jehoahaz, the fourth. The successors of Jehoiakim were his son Jehoiachin and his brother Zedekiah. Descendants of Jehoiachin. The sons of Jehoiachin, who was taken prisoner by the Babylonians, were Shealtiel, Malkiram, Pedaiah, Shenazer, Jechamiah, Hoshama, and Nedabiah. The sons of Pedaiah were Zerubbabel and Shimei. The sons of Zerubbabel were Meshulam and Hananiah. Their sister was Shelemith. His five other sons were Hashubah, Ohel, Berechiah, Hezadiah, and Jushab Hesed. The sons of Hananiah were Pelatiah and Jeshaiah. Jeshaiah's son was Raphaiah. Raphaiah's son was Arnan. Arnan's son was Obadiah. Obadiah's son was Shechaniah. The descendants of Shechaniah were Shemaiah and his sons Hatush, Eagle, Beriah, Neriah, and Shaphat, six in all. The sons of Neriah were Elioenai, Hizkiah, and Azrakam, three in all. The sons of Ilioenai were Hodaviah, Eliashib, Peleah, Akub, Johanan, Delaiah, and Anani, seven in all. Chapter 4 Other Descendants of Judah The descendants of Judah were Perez, Hezron, Carmi, Hur, and Shobal. Shobal's son Reah was the father of Jahath. Jahath was the father of Ahumai and Lahath. These were the families of the Zorathites. 
The descendants of Etam were Jezreel, Ishma, Idbash, their sister Hazel Pony, Penuel, the father of Gedor, and Ezer, the father of Husha. These were the descendants of Hur, the firstborn of Ephrathah, the ancestor of Bethlehem. Asher, the father of Tekoa, had two wives named Hela and Nera. Nera gave birth to Ahuzam, Hefer, Timeni, and Heashtari. Hela gave birth to Zareth, Izhar, Ethnan, and Kaz, who became the ancestor of Anab, Zobibah, and all the families of Aharal, son of Haram. There was a man named Jabez who was more honorable than any of his brothers. His mother named him Jabez because his birth had been so painful. He was the one who prayed to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and expand my territory. Please be with me in all that I do and keep me from all trouble and pain. And God granted him his request. Caleb, the brother of Shua, was the father of Meher. Meher was the father of Eshton. Eshton was the father of Beth Rapha, Pesia, and Tehina. Tehina was the father of Irnehash. These were the descendants of Rika. The sons of Kenaz were Othniel and Sirea. Othniel's sons were Hathath and Meonathai. Meonathai was the father of Ophrah. Sirea was the father of Joab, the founder of the Valley of Craftsmen, so called because they were craftsmen. The sons of Caleb, son of Jephunneh, were Iru, Elah, and Naam. The son of Elah was Kenaz. The sons of Jehalalel were Ziph, Zipha, Teria, and Azarel. The sons of Ezra were Jether, Mirid, Epher, and Jalon. One of Mirid's wives became the mother of Miriam, Shammai, and Ishba, the father of Eshtemoa. He married a woman from Judah, who became the mother of Jerod, the father of Gedor, Heber, the father of Soko, and Jekuthiel, the father of Zenoah. Mirid also married Bithia, a daughter of Pharaoh, and she bore him children. Hodiah's wife was the sister of Nahab. One of her sons was the father of Kelah, the Garmite, and another was the father of Eshtemoa, the Maacathite. The sons of Shimon were Amnon, Rena, Ben-Hanan, and Telan. The descendants of Ishai were Zoheth and Ben-Zoheth. Descendants of Judah's son, Shelah. Shelah was one of Judah's sons. The descendants of Shelah were Ur, the father of Lekah, Laeda, the father of Marisha, the families of linen workers at Beth Ashbia, Jochim, the men of Kozabah, and Joash and Seraph, who ruled over Moab and Jeshubai Lehem. These names all come from ancient records. They were the pottery makers who lived in Nataim and Gedera. They lived there and worked for the king. Descendants of Simeon. The sons of Simeon were Jemul, Jamin, Jerib, Zohar, and Shal. The descendants of Shal were Shalom, Mibsam, and Mishma. The descendants of Mishma were Hamuel, Zakur, and Shimei. Shimei had sixteen sons and six daughters. But none of his brothers had large families, so Simeon's tribe never grew as large as the tribe of Judah. They lived in Beersheba, Molada, Hazar Shul, Bilha, Ezem, Tolad, Bethul, Horma, Ziklag, Beth Markaboth, Hazar Susim, Beth Birai, and Shearaim. These towns were under their control until the time of King David. Their descendants also lived in Etam, Ain, Rimen, Token, and Ashan five towns and their surrounding villages as far away as Baalath. This was their territory, and these names are listed in their genealogical records. Other descendants of Simeon included Meshobab, Jamlek, Josha, son of Amaziah, Joel, Jehu, son of Joshabiah, son of Sereah, son of Aziel, Elioenai, Jeechobah, Joshohiah, Aseah, Adiel, Jezemiel, Benaiah, and Ziza, son of Shiphai, son of Alon, son of Jedea, son of Shimri, son of Shimea. These were the names of some of the leaders of Simeon's wealthy clans. Their families grew, and they traveled to the region of Gerar, in the east part of the valley, seeking pasture land for their flocks. They found lush pastures there, and the land was quiet and peaceful. Some of Ham's descendants had been living in that region, but during the reign of King Hezekiah of Judah, these leaders of Simeon invaded the region and completely destroyed the homes of the descendants of Ham and of the Meonites. No trace of them remains today. 
They killed everyone who lived there and took the land for themselves because they wanted its good pasture land for their flocks. Five hundred of these invaders from the tribe of Simeon went to Mount Seir, led by Pelatiah, Neriah, Rephaiah, and Uziel, all sons of Ishai. They destroyed the few Amalekites who had survived, and they have lived there ever since. Chapter 5 Descendants of Reuben The oldest son of Israel was Reuben. But since he dishonored his father by sleeping with one of his father's concubines, his birthright was given to the sons of his brother Joseph. For this reason, Reuben is not listed in the genealogical records as the firstborn son. The descendants of Judah became the most powerful tribe and provided a ruler for the nation. But the birthright belonged to Joseph. The sons of Reuben, the oldest son of Israel, were Hanak, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. The descendants of Joel were Shemaiah, Gog, Shimei, Micah, Reaiah, Baal, and Beerah. Beerah was the leader of the Reubenites when they were taken into captivity by King Tiglath-Pileser of Assyria. Beerah's relatives are listed in their genealogical records by their clans. Jeiel, the leader, Zechariah, and Bela, son of Azaz, son of Shema, son of Joel. The Reubenites lived in the area that stretches from Aror to Nebo and baal Meon. And since they had so many livestock in the land of Gilead, they spread east toward the edge of the desert that stretches to the Euphrates River. During the reign of Saul, the Reubenites defeated the Hagrites in battle. Then they moved into the Hagrite settlements all along the eastern edge of Gilead. Descendants of Gad Next to the Reubenites, the descendants of Gad lived in the land of Bashan as far east as Salica. Joel was the leader in the land of Bashan, and Shapham was second in command, followed by Jani and Shaphat. Their relatives, the leaders of seven other clans, were Michael, Meshulam, Sheba, Jorai, Jachin, Ziah, and Eber. These were all descendants of Abihail, son of Hurai, son of Jeroah, son of Gilead, son of Michael, son of Jeshishai, son of Jado, son of Buzz. Ahai, son of Abdiel, son of Gunai, was the leader of their clans. The Gadites lived in the land of Gilead in Bashan and its villages, and throughout all the pasture lands of Sharon. All of these were listed in the genealogical records during the days of King Jotham of Judah and King Jeroboam of Israel. The tribes east of the Jordan. There were 44,760 capable warriors in the armies of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. They were all skilled in combat and armed with shields, swords, and bows. They waged war against the Hagrites, the Jeterites, the Naphishites, and the Notabites. They cried out to God during the battle, and he answered their prayer because they trusted in him. So the Hagrites and all their allies were defeated. The plunder taken from the Hagrites included 50,000 camels, 250,000 sheep and goats, 2,000 donkeys, and 100,000 captives. Many of the Hagrites were killed in the battle because God was fighting against them. The people of Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh lived in their land until they were taken into exile. The half-tribe of Manasseh was very large and spread through the land from Bashan to Baal Hermon, Senor, and Mount Hermon. These were the leaders of their clans, Ephor, Ishai, Eliel, Azrael, Jeremiah, Hodaviah, and Jadiel. These men had a great reputation as mighty warriors and leaders of their clans. But these tribes were unfaithful to the God of their ancestors. They worshipped the gods of the nations that God had destroyed. So the God of Israel caused King Pul of Assyria, also known as Tiglath-Pileser, to invade the land and take away the people of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh as captives. The Assyrians exiled them to Hela, Habor, Hera, and the Gozan River, where they remain to this day. Chapter 6 The Priestly Line The sons of Levi were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The descendants of Kohath included Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel. The children of Amram were Aaron, Moses, and Miriam. The sons of Aaron were Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. Eleazar was the father of Phinehas. Phinehas was the father of Abishua. Abishua was the father of Bukai. Bukai was the father of Uzai. Uzai was the father of Zeraiah. Zeraiah was the father of Miraoth. Miraoth was the father of Amariah. Amariah was the father of Ahitub. 
Ahitub was the father of Zadok. Zadok was the father of Ahimeaz. Ahimeaz was the father of Azariah. Azariah was the father of Johanan. Johanan was the father of Azariah, the high priest at the temple built by Solomon in Jerusalem. Azariah was the father of Amariah. Amariah was the father of Ahitub. Ahitab was the father of Zadok. Zadok was the father of Shalom. Shalom was the father of Hilkiah. Hilkiah was the father of Azariah. Azariah was the father of Sireah. Sireah was the father of Jehozadak, who went into exile when the Lord sent the people of Judah and Jerusalem into captivity under Nebuchadnezzar. The Levite clans. The sons of Levi were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The descendants of Gershon included Libni and Shimei. The descendants of Kohath included Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel. The descendants of Merari included Malai and Mushai. The following were the Levite clans listed according to their ancestral descent. The descendants of Gershon included Libni, Jahath, Zima, Joah, Ido, Zira, and Jeathari. The descendants of Kohath included Aminadab, Korah, Asur, Elkanah, Abiasaph, Asur, Tehath, Uriel, Uzziah, and Shaul. The descendants of Elkanah included Amasai, Ahimoth, Elkanah, Zophai, Nahath, Eliab, Jeroam, Elkanah, and Samuel. The sons of Samuel were Joel, the older, and Abijah, the second. The descendants of Merari included Malai, Libni, Shimei, Uzzah, Shimea, Hagia, and Asaya. The Temple Musicians David assigned the following men to lead the music at the house of the Lord after the ark was placed there. They ministered with music at the tabernacle until Solomon built the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. They carried out their work following all the regulations handed down to them. These are the men who served along with their sons. Heman, the musician, was from the clan of Kohath. His genealogy was traced back through Joel, Samuel, Elkanah, Jeroam, Eliel, Toa, Zuf, Elkanah, Mahath, Amasai, Elkanah, Joel, Azariah, Zephaniah, Tehath, Aser, Abiasaph, Korah, Izhar, Kohath, Levi, and Israel. Heman's first assistant was Asaph from the clan of Gershon. Asaph's genealogy was traced back through Berechiah, Shimei, Michael, Baasiah, Malchijah, Ethni, Zerah, Adaiah, Ethan, Zima, Shimei, Jahath, Gershon, and Levi. Heman's second assistant was Ethan from the clan of Merari. Ethan's genealogy was traced back through Kishai, Abdi, Moloch, Hashabiah, Amaziah, Hilkiah, Amzi, Bani, Shemer, Malai, Mushai, Merari, and Levi. Their fellow Levites were appointed to various other tasks in the tabernacle, the house of God. Aaron's descendants. Only Aaron and his descendants served as priests. They presented the offerings on the altar of burnt offering and the altar of incense, and they performed all the other duties related to the most holy place. They made atonement for Israel by doing everything that Moses, the servant of God, had commanded them. The descendants of Aaron were Eliezer, Phinehas, Abishua, Bukai, Uzai, Zerahiah, Meraiath, Amariah, Ahitub, Zadok, and Ahimaaz. Territory for the Levites. This is a record of the towns and territory assigned by means of sacred lots to the descendants of Aaron, who were from the clan of Kohath. This territory included Hebron and its surrounding pasture lands in Judah. But the fields and outlying areas belonging to the city were given to Caleb, son of Jephunneh. So the descendants of Aaron were given the following towns, each with its pasture lands. Hebron, a city of refuge. Libna, Jeter, Eshtimoah, Holon, Deber, Ain, Jutta, and Beth Shemesh. And from the territory of Benjamin, they were given Gibeon, Geba, Alameth, and Anathoth, each with its pasture lands. So thirteen towns were given to the descendants of Aaron. The remaining descendants of Kohath received ten towns from the territory of the half-tribe of Manasseh by means of sacred lots. The descendants of Gershon received by sacred lots thirteen towns from the territories of Issachar, Asher, Naphtali, and from the Bashan area of Manasseh east of the Jordan. The descendants of Merari received by sacred lots twelve towns from the territories of Reuben, Gad, and Zebulun. 
So the people of Israel assigned all these towns and pasture lands to the Levites. The towns in the territories of Judah, Simeon, and Benjamin, mentioned above, were assigned to them by means of sacred lots. The descendants of Kohath were given the following towns from the territory of Ephraim, each with its pasture lands. Shechem, a city of refuge in the hill country of Ephraim, Gezer, Jachmiel, Beth Horon, Ajalon, and Gath Rimmon. The remaining descendants of Kohath were assigned the towns of Aner and Bileam from the territory of the half tribe of Manasseh, each with its pasture lands. The descendants of Gershon received the towns of Golan in Bashan and Ashtaroth from the territory of the half tribe of Manasseh, each with its pasture lands. From the territory of Issachar, they were given Kedish, Dabareth, Ramoth, and Anam, each with its pasture lands. From the territory of Asher, they received Marshall, Abdon, Hukuk, and Rehob, each with its pasture lands. From the territory of Naphtali, they were given Kedish in Galilee, Haman, and Kiriathaim, each with its pasture lands. The remaining descendants of Mirari received the towns of Jachnium, Karta, Rimmon, and Tabor from the territory of Zebulun, each with its pasture lands. From the territory of Reuben, east of the Jordan River, opposite Jericho, they received Bezer, a desert town, Jahaz, Kedemoth, and Mephaath, each with its pasture lands. And from the territory of Gad, they received Ramoth in Gilead, Maenaim, Heshbon, and Jazer, each with its pasture lands. Chapter 7 Descendants of Issachar The four sons of Issachar were Tola, Pua, Jashub, and Shimron. The sons of Tola were Uzai, Rephaiah, Jeriel, Jemei, Ibsam, and Shemuel. Each of them was the leader of an ancestral clan. At the time of King David, the total number of mighty warriors listed in the records of these clans was 22,600. The son of Uzai was Israiah. The sons of Israiah were Michael, Obadiah, Joel, and Ishiah. These five became the leaders of clans. All of them had many wives and many sons. So the total number of men available for military service among their descendants was 36,000. The total number of mighty warriors from all the clans of the tribe of Issachar was 87,000. All of them were listed in their genealogical records. Descendants of Benjamin Three of Benjamin's sons were Bela, Beker, and Jediael. The five sons of Bela were Esben, Azai, Uziel, Jeremoth, and Eri. Each of them was the leader of an ancestral clan. The total number of mighty warriors from these clans was 22,034, as listed in their genealogical records. The sons of Beker were Zemira, Joash, Eleazar, Elioenai, Amri, Jeremoth, Abijah, Anathoth, and Alameth. Each of them was the leader of an ancestral clan. The total number of mighty warriors and leaders from these clans was 20,200, as listed in their genealogical records. The son of Jediel was Bilhan. The sons of Bilhan were Jeush, Benjamin, Ehud, Kanaena, Zethan, Tarshish, and Ahashahar. Each of them was the leader of an ancestral clan. From these clans, the total number of mighty warriors ready for war was 17,200. The sons of Ur were Shuppam and Huppam. Hushim was the son of Aver. Descendants of Naphtali The sons of Naphtali were Jezeel, Gunai, Jezer, and Shilam. They were all descendants of Jacob's concubine Bilhah. Descendants of Manasseh The descendants of Manasseh through his Aramean concubine included Azrael. She also bore Maker, the father of Gilead. Maker found wives for Huppam and Shuppam. Maker had a sister named Maeka. One of his descendants was Zelophehad, who had only daughters. Maker's wife, Maeka, gave birth to a son whom she named Pirish. His brother's name was Shirish. The sons of Pirish were Ulam and Rechem. The son of Ulam was Bedan. All these were considered Gileadites, descendants of Maker, son of Manasseh. Maker's sister, Hamolaketh, gave birth to Ishad, Abaezer, and Mala. The sons of Shemida were Ahayan, Shechem, Lichai, and Anayim. Descendants of Ephraim The descendants of Ephraim were Shuthala, Birid, Tehath, Elada, Tehath, Zabad, Shuthala, Ezer, and Elid. These two were killed trying to steal livestock from the local farmers near Gath. 
Their father Ephraim mourned for them a long time, and his relatives came to comfort him. Afterward, Ephraim slept with his wife, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. Ephraim named him Beriah because of the tragedy his family had suffered. He had a daughter named Shira. She built the towns of Lower and Upper Beth Horon and Uzan Shira. The descendants of Ephraim included Repha, Reshef, Tila, Tehan, Laden, Amihud, Elishama, Nun, and Joshua. The descendants of Ephraim lived in the territory that included Bethel and its surrounding towns to the south, Naaran to the east, Gezer and its villages to the west, and Shechem and its surrounding villages to the north as far as Aya and its towns. Along the border of Manasseh were the towns of Bethshan, Teanach, Megiddo, Dor, and their surrounding villages. The descendants of Joseph, son of Israel, lived in these towns. Descendants of Asher. The sons of Asher were Imna, Ishva, Ishvai, and Beriah. They had a sister named Sarah. The sons of Beriah were Heber and Malchael, the father of Berzea. The sons of Heber were Japhlet, Shomer, and Hotham. They had a sister named Shua. The sons of Japhlet were Peshach, Bimhal, and Ashbath. The sons of Shomer were Ahai, Roga, Hava, and Aram. The sons of his brother Helam were Zopha, Imna, Shelish, and Amal. The sons of Zopha were Shua, Harnefer, Shuel, Berai, Imra, Bezer, Had, Shama, Shilsha, Ithran, and Beera. The sons of Jether were Jephuna, Pizpa, and Era. The sons of Ula were Era, Haniel, and Rizia. Each of these descendants of Asher was the head of an ancestral clan. They were all select men, mighty warriors, and outstanding leaders. The total number of men available for military service was 26,000, as listed in their genealogical records. Chapter 8 Descendants of Benjamin Benjamin's first son was Bela, the second was Ashbel, the third was Ahara, the fourth was Noah, and the fifth was Rapha. The sons of Bela were Adar, Gera, Abihud, Abashua, Naaman, Ahoa, Gera, Shafufan, and Huram. The sons of Ehud, leaders of the clans living at Geba, were exiled to Manahath. Ehud's sons were Naaman, Ahijah, and Gera. Gera, who led them into exile, was the father of Uzzah and Ahihud. After Shehareim divorced his wives Hushim and Bera, he had children in the land of Moab. Hodesh, his new wife, gave birth to Jobab, Zibia, Misha, Malcolm, Jeuz, Sekiah, and Mirma. These sons all became the leaders of clans. Shearam's wife Hushim had already given birth to Abitub and Elpale. The sons of Elpale were Eber, Misham, Shemid, who built the towns of Ono and Lod and their nearby villages, Bariah and Shema. They were the leaders of the clans living in Ejelon, and they drove out the inhabitants of Gath. Ahio, Sheshak, Jeremoth, Zebediah, Arid, Eder, Michael, Ishpa, and Joha were the sons of Beriah. Zebediah, Meshulam, Hizkai, Heber, Ishmirai, Islia, and Jobab were the sons of Elpael. Jacob, Zikri, Zabdi, Elianai, Zilathai, Eliel, Adiah, Beraiah, and Shimrath were the sons of Shimei. Ishpan, Eber, Eliel, Abdon, Zikri, Hanan, Hananiah, Elam, Anthathijah, Iftaiah, and Penuel were the sons of Sheshach. Shamshari, Shehariah, Athaliah, Jerashiah, Elijah, and Zikri were the sons of Jeroham. These were the leaders of the ancestral clans. They were listed in their genealogical records, and they all lived in Jerusalem. The family of Saul. Jeiel, the father of Gibeon, lived in the town of Gibeon. His wife's name was Maacah, and his oldest son was named Abdon. Jeiel's other sons were Zur, Kish, Baal, Ner, Nadab, Gedor, Ahio, Zechariah, and Miklot, who was the father of Shimeon. All these families lived near each other in Jerusalem. Ner was the father of Kish. Kish was the father of Saul. Saul was the father of Jonathan, Melchishua, Abinadab, and Eshbaal. Jonathan was the father of Mirab Baal. Mirab Baal was the father of Micah. Micah was the father of Pithon, Melek, Teria, and Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Jada. Jada was the father of Elameth, Asmaveth, and Zimri. Zimri was the father of Moza. 
Moza was the father of Binia. Binia was the father of Rephaiah. Rephaiah was the father of Eliasa. Eliasa was the father of Azel. Azel had six sons: Ezrakim, Bakrau, Ishmael, Sheraiah, Obadiah, and Hanan. These were the sons of Azel. Azel's brother Ishak had three sons. The first was Ulam, the second was Jeush, and the third was Eliphalet. Ulam's sons were all mighty warriors and expert archers. They had many sons and grandsons, one hundred and fifty in all. All these were descendants of Benjamin. Chapter nine. So all Israel was listed in the genealogical records in the book of the kings of Israel. The returning exiles. The people of Judah were exiled to Babylon because they were unfaithful to the Lord. The first of the exiles to return to their property in their former towns were priests, Levites, temple servants, and other Israelites. Some of the people from the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, Ephraim, and Manasseh came and settled in Jerusalem. One family that returned was that of Uthai, son of Amihu, son of Amri, son of Imri, son of Benai, a descendant of Perez, son of Judah. Others returned from the Shilonite clan, including Asaia, the oldest, and his sons. From the Zerahite clan, Jeuel returned with his relatives. In all, 690 families from the tribe of Judah returned. From the tribe of Benjamin came Salu, son of Meshulam, son of Hodaviah, son of Hashanua. Ibnia, son of Jeroham, Ela, son of Uzai, son of Mikri, and Meshulam, son of Shephatiah, son of Ruel, son of Ibnijah. These men were all leaders of clans, and they were listed in their genealogical records. In all, nine hundred and fifty-six families from the tribe of Benjamin returned. The returning priests. Among the priests who returned were Jedaya, Jehoiarib, Jakin, Azariah, son of Hilkiah. Son of Meshulam, son of Zadok, son of Mireoth, son of Ahito. Azariah was the chief officer of the house of God. Other returning priests were Adaiah, son of Jeroham, son of Pasher, son of Milkaiah, and Maaseiah, son of Adiel, son of Jezura, son of Meshulam, son of Meshilamith, son of Immer. In all, one thousand seven hundred and sixty priests returned. They were heads of clans and very able men. They were responsible for ministering at the house of God. The returning Levites. The Levites who returned were Shimea, son of Hashub, son of Azrikam, son of Hashabiah, a descendant of Merari. Back Bakar, Herish, Galal, Mataniah, son of Micah, son of Zikri, son of Asaph, Obadiah, son of Shimea, son of Galal, son of Jeduthun. And Berachiah, son of Asa, son of Elkana, who lived in the area of Netopha, the gatekeepers who returned were Shalom, Achab, Talmon, Ahiman, and their relatives. Shalom was the chief gatekeeper. Prior to this time, they were responsible for the king's gate on the east side. These men served as gatekeepers for the camps of the Levites. Shalom was the son of Kor, a descendant of Abiasaph from the clan of Korah. He and his relatives, the Korahites, were responsible for guarding the entrance to the sanctuary, just as their ancestors had guarded the tabernacle in the camp of the Lord. Phineas, son of Eleazar, had been in charge of the gatekeepers in earlier times, and the Lord had been with him. And later, Zechariah, son of Meshelamiah, was responsible for guarding the entrance to the tabernacle. In all, there were two hundred and twelve gatekeepers in those days, and they were listed according to the genealogies in their villages. David and Samuel, the seer, had appointed their ancestors because they were reliable men. These gatekeepers and their descendants, by their divisions, were responsible for guarding the entrance to the house of the Lord when that house was a tent. The gatekeepers were stationed on all four sides: east, west, north, and south. Their relatives in the villages came regularly to share their duties for seven-day periods. The four chief gatekeepers, all Levites, were trusted officials. For they were responsible for the rooms and treasuries at the house of God. They would spend the night around the house of God, since it was their duty to guard it and to open the gates every morning. Some of the gatekeepers were assigned to care for the various articles used in worship. They checked them in and out to avoid any loss. Others were responsible for the furnishings, the items in the sanctuary, and the supplies, such as choice flour, wine, olive oil, frankincense, and spices. But it was the priests who blended the spices. 
Mattathiah, a Levite, and the oldest son of Shalom the Korahite, was entrusted with baking the bread used in the offerings. And some members of the clan of Kohath were in charge of preparing the bread to be set on the table each Sabbath day. The musicians, all prominent Levites, lived at the temple. They were exempt from other responsibilities, since they were on duty at all hours. All these men lived in Jerusalem. They were the heads of Levite families and were listed as prominent leaders in their genealogical records. King Saul's Family Tree Jeiel, the father of Gibeon, lived in the town of Gibeon. His wife's name was Maekah, and his oldest son was named Abdon. Jeiel's other sons were Zur, Kish, Baal, Ner, Nadab, Gedor, Ahio, Zechariah, and Mikloth. Mikloth was the father of Shimeon. All these families lived near each other in Jerusalem. Ner was the father of Kish. Kish was the father of Saul. Saul was the father of Jonathan, Melchishua, Abinadab, and Eshbaal. Jonathan was the father of Mirab Baal. Mirab Baal was the father of Micah. The sons of Micah were Pithon, Melech, Taria, and Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Jada. Jada was the father of Alameth, Asmaveth, and Zimri. Zimri was the father of Moza. Moza was the father of Binia. Binia's son was Rephaeh. Rephaeh's son was Eliasa. Eliasa's son was Azel. Azel had six sons, whose names were Ezrakam, Bokaru, Ishmael, Sheariah, Obadiah, and Hanan. These were the sons of Azel. Chapter 10 The Death of King Saul Now the Philistines attacked Israel, and the men of Israel fled before them. Many were slaughtered on the slopes of Mount Gilboa. The Philistines closed in on Saul and his sons, and they killed three of his sons, Jonathan, Abinadab, and Melchishua. The fighting grew very fierce around Saul, and the Philistine archers caught up with him and wounded him. Saul groaned to his armor-bearer, Take your sword and kill me before these pagan Philistines come to taunt and torture me. But his armor-bearer was afraid and would not do it. So Saul took his own sword and fell on it. When his armor-bearer realized that Saul was dead, he fell on his own sword and died. So Saul and his three sons died there together, bringing his dynasty to an end. When all the Israelites in the Jezreel Valley saw that their army had fled and that Saul and his sons were dead, they abandoned their towns and fled. So the Philistines moved in and occupied their towns. The next day, when the Philistines went out to strip the dead, they found the bodies of Saul and his sons on Mount Gilboa. So they stripped off Saul's armor and cut off his head. Then they proclaimed the good news of Saul's death before their idols and to the people throughout the land of Philistia. They placed his armor in the temple of their gods, and they fastened his head to the temple of Dagon. But when everyone in Jabesh Gilead heard about everything the Philistines had done to Saul, all their mighty warriors brought the bodies of Saul and his sons back to Jabesh. Then they buried their bones beneath the great tree at Jabesh and they fasted for seven days. So Saul died because he was unfaithful to the Lord. He failed to obey the Lord's command, and he even consulted a medium instead of asking the Lord for guidance. So the Lord killed him and turned the kingdom over to David, son of Jesse. Chapter 11 David becomes king of all Israel. Then all Israel gathered before David at Hebron and told him, We are your own flesh and blood. In the past, even when Saul was king, you were the one who really led the forces of Israel. And the Lord your God told you, You will be the shepherd of my people Israel. You will be the leader of my people Israel. So there at Hebron, David made a covenant before the Lord with all the elders of Israel. And they anointed him king of Israel, just as the Lord had promised through Samuel. David captures Jerusalem. Then David and all Israel went to Jerusalem, or Jebus, as it used to be called, where the Jebusites, the original inhabitants of the land, were living. The people of Jebus taunted David, saying, You'll never get in here. But David captured the fortress of Zion, which is now called the city of David. David had said to his troops, Whoever is first to attack the Jebusites will become the commander of my armies. And Joab, the son of David's sister Zeruiah, was first to attack, so he became the commander of David's armies. David made the fortress his home, and that is why it is called the City of David. He extended the city from the supporting terraces to the surrounding area, 
while Joab rebuilt the rest of Jerusalem. And David became more and more powerful because the Lord of Heaven's armies was with him. David's Mightiest Warriors These are the leaders of David's mighty warriors. Together with all Israel, they decided to make David their king, just as the Lord had promised concerning Israel. Here is the record of David's mightiest warriors. The first was Jashabim the Hackmanite, who was leader of the three, the mightiest warriors among David's men. He once used his spear to kill 300 enemy warriors in a single battle. Next in rank among the three was Eleazar son of Dodia, a descendant of Ahoah. He was with David in the battle against the Philistines at Pass Dami. The battle took place in a field full of barley, and the Israelite army fled. But Eleazar and David held their ground in the middle of the field and beat back the Philistines. So the Lord saved them by giving them a great victory. Once when David was at the rock near the cave of Adullam, the Philistine army was camped in the valley of Rephaim. The three, who were among the thirty, an elite group among David's fighting men, went down to meet him there. David was staying in the stronghold at the time, and a Philistine detachment had occupied the town of Bethlehem. David remarked longingly to his men, Oh, how I would love some of that good water from the well by the gate in Bethlehem. So the three broke through the Philistine lines, drew some water from the well by the gate in Bethlehem, and brought it back to David. But David refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out as an offering to the Lord. God forbid that I should drink this, he exclaimed. This water is as precious as the blood of these men who risk their lives to bring it to me. So David did not drink it. These are examples of the exploits of the three. David's thirty mighty men. Abishai, the brother of Joab, was the leader of the thirty. He once used his spear to kill three hundred enemy warriors in a single battle. It was by such feats that he became as famous as the three. Abishai was the most famous of the thirty and was their commander, though he was not one of the three. There was also Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, a valiant warrior from Kabzil. He did many heroic deeds, which included killing two champions of Moab. Another time, on a snowy day, he chased a lion down into a pit and killed him. Once, armed only with a club, he killed an Egyptian warrior who was seven and a half feet tall and whose spear was as thick as a weaver's beam. Benaiah wrenched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with it. Deeds like these made Benaiah as famous as the three mightiest warriors. He was more honored than the other members of the thirty, though he was not one of the three. And David made him captain of his bodyguard. David's mighty warriors also included Asahel, Joab's brother, Elhanan, son of Dodo from Bethlehem, Shammah from Herod, Heliz from Pelan, Ira, son of Ikish from Tekoa, Abiezer from Anathoth, Sibakai from Husha, Zalman from Ahoa, Maharai from Natofa, Helid, son of Meena from Natofa, Ithai, son of Ribai from Gibeah in the land of Benjamin, Benaiah from Pirathon, Hurai from near Nahel Geash, Abai Alban from Ereba, Asmaveth from Bahurim, Ilaba from Shealban, the sons of Jashin from Gizan, Jonathan, son of Shaggy, from Herar, Ahiam, son of Sheer, from Herar, Eliphal, son of Ur, Hefer, from Mikira, Ahijah, from Pelan, Hezro, from Carmel, Peirai, son of Ezbai, Joel, the brother of Nathan, Mibhar, son of Hagrai, Zelik, from Ammon, Neherai, from Beroth, Joab's armor-bearer, Ira, from Jeter, Gerub from Jatir, Uriah the Hittite, Zabad son of Ali, Adina son of Shiza the Reubenite leader who had thirty men with him, Hanan son of Meekah, Joshaphat from Mithna, Uziah from Ashtaroth, Shammah and Jeiel the sons of Hatham from Aror, Jadiel son of Shimri, Joah his brother from Tiz, Iliel from Mehava, Jerabai and Joshaviah the sons of Elnaim, Ithma from Moab, Iliel in Obed, Jaziel from Zobah. Chapter 12 Warriors Join David's Army The following men joined David at Ziklag while he was hiding from Saul, son of Kish. They were among the warriors who fought beside David in battle. 
All of them were expert archers, and they could shoot arrows or sling stones with their left hand as well as their right. They were all relatives of Saul from the tribe of Benjamin. Their leader was Ahiezer, son of Shimea from Gibeah. His brother Joash was second in command. These were the other warriors, Jeziel and Pelet, sons of Asmabeth, Berakah, Jehu from Anathoth, Ishmaeliah from Gibeon, a famous warrior and leader among the thirty, Jeremiah, Jehaziel, Johanan, and Josabad from Gedera, Eluzai, Jeremoth, Beeliah, Shemariah, and Shephatiah from Herod. Elkanah, Ishiah, Azrael, Jozer, and Jashubim, who were Korahites. Jola and Zebadiah, sons of Jeroam, from Gedor. Some brave and experienced warriors from the tribe of Gad also defected to David while he was at the stronghold in the wilderness. They were expert with both shield and spear, as fierce as lions and as swift as deer on the mountains. Ezer was their leader. Obadiah was second. Eliab was third. Mishmana was fourth. Jeremiah was fifth, Adai was sixth, Eliel was seventh, Johanan was eighth, Elzabad was ninth, Jeremiah was tenth, Macbeni was eleventh. These warriors from Gad were army commanders. The weakest among them could take on a hundred regular troops, and the strongest could take on a thousand. These were the men who crossed the Jordan River during its seasonal flooding at the beginning of the year and drove out all the people living in the lowlands on both the east and west banks. Others from Benjamin and Judah came to David at the stronghold. David went out to meet them and said, "If you have come in peace to help me, we are friends. But if you have come to betray me to my enemies when I am innocent, then may the God of our ancestors see it and punish you." Then the spirit came upon Amasiah, the leader of the thirty, and he said, "We are yours, David. We are on your side, son of Jesse. Peace and prosperity be with you, and success to all who help you." For your God is the one who helps you. So David let them join him, and he made them officers over his troops. Some men from Manasseh defected from the Israelite army and joined David when he set out with the Philistines to fight against Saul. But as it turned out, the Philistine rulers refused to let David and his men go with them. After much discussion, they sent them back. For they said, "It will cost us our heads if David switches loyalties to Saul and turns against us." Here is a list of the men from Manasseh who defected to David as he was returning to Ziklag: Adna, Jazabad, Jediel, Michael, Jazabad, Elihu, and Zithalai. Each commanded one thousand troops from the tribe of Manasseh. They helped David chase down bands of raiders, for they were all brave and able warriors who became commanders in his army. Day after day, more men joined David until he had a great army, like the army of God. These are the numbers of armed warriors who joined David at Hebron. They were all eager to see David become king instead of Saul, just as the Lord had promised. From the tribe of Judah, there were six thousand eight hundred warriors armed with shields and spears. From the tribe of Simeon, there were seven thousand one hundred brave warriors. From the tribe of Levi, there were four thousand six hundred warriors. This included Jehoiada, leader of the family of Aaron. Who had three thousand seven hundred under his command? This also included Zadok, a brave young warrior with twenty-two members of his family who were all officers. From the tribe of Benjamin, Saul's relatives, there were three thousand warriors. Most of the men from Benjamin had remained loyal to Saul until this time. From the tribe of Ephraim, there were twenty thousand eight hundred brave warriors, each highly respected in his own clan. From the half tribe of Manasseh, west of the Jordan, eighteen thousand men were designated by name to help David become king. From the tribe of Issachar, there were two hundred leaders of the tribe with their relatives. All these men understood the signs of the times and knew the best course for Israel to take. From the tribe of Zebulun, there were fifty thousand skilled warriors. They were fully armed and prepared for battle and completely loyal to David. From the tribe of Naphtali, there were one thousand officers and thirty-seven thousand warriors armed with shields and spears. From the tribe of Dan, there were twenty-eight thousand six hundred warriors, all prepared for battle. From the tribe of Asher, there were forty thousand trained warriors, all prepared for battle. From the east side of the Jordan River, where the tribes of Reuben and Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh lived, there were one hundred and twenty thousand troops armed with every kind of weapon. 
All these men came in battle array to Hebron with the single purpose of making David the king over all Israel. In fact, everyone in Israel agreed that David should be their king. They feasted and drank with David for three days, for preparations had been made by their relatives for their arrival. And people from as far away as Issachar, Zebulun, and Naphtali brought food on donkeys, camels, mules, and oxen. Vast supplies of flour, fig cakes, clusters of raisins, wine, olive oil, cattle, sheep, and goats were brought to the celebration. There was great joy throughout the land of Israel. Chapter 13 David Attempts to Move the Ark David consulted with all his officials, including the generals and captains of his army. Then he addressed the entire assembly of Israel as follows. If you approve, and if it is the will of the Lord our God, let us send messages to all the Israelites throughout the land, including the priests and Levites in their towns and pasture lands. Let us invite them to come and join us. It is time to bring back the ark of our God, for we neglected it during the reign of Saul. The whole assembly agreed to this, for the people could see it was the right thing to do. So David summoned all Israel, from the Shihor Brook of Egypt in the south all the way to the town of Lebohamoth in the north, to join in bringing the Ark of God from Kiriath-Jerim. Then David and all Israel went to Bela of Judah, also called Kiriath-Jerim, to bring back the Ark of God, which bears the name of the Lord who is enthroned between the cherubim. They placed the Ark of God on a new cart and brought it from Abinadab's house. Uzzah and Ohio were guiding the cart. David and all Israel were celebrating before God with all their might, singing songs and playing all kinds of musical instruments, lyres, harps, tambourines, cymbals, and trumpets. But when they arrived at the threshing floor of Nacon, the oxen stumbled, and Uzzah reached out his hand to steady the ark. Then the Lord's anger was aroused against Uzzah, and he struck him dead because he had laid his hand on the ark. So Uzzah died there in the presence of God. David was angry because the Lord's anger had burst out against Uzzah. He named that place Perez Uzzah, which means to burst out against Uzzah, as it is still called today. David was now afraid of God, and he asked, How can I ever bring the ark of God back into my care? So David did not move the ark into the city of David. Instead, he took it to the house of Obed-Edom of Gath. The ark of God remained there in Obed-Edom's house for three months, and the Lord blessed the household of Obed-Edom and everything he owned. Chapter 14 David's Palace and Family Then King Hiram of Tyre sent messengers to David along with cedar timber, and stonemasons, and carpenters, to build him a palace. And David realized that the Lord had confirmed him as king over Israel, and had greatly blessed his kingdom for the sake of his people Israel. Then David married more wives in Jerusalem, and they had more sons and daughters. These are the names of David's sons who were born in Jerusalem. Shemua, Shobab, Nathan, Solomon, Ibhar, Elishua, Elpalet, Noga, Nepheg, Japhiah, Elishama, Iliada and Eliphalet. David conquers the Philistines. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over all Israel, they mobilized all their forces to capture him. But David was told they were coming, so he marched out to meet them. The Philistines arrived and made a raid in the valley of Rephaim. So David asked God, Should I go out to fight the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? The Lord replied, Yes, go ahead. I will hand them over to you. So David and his troops went up to baal Perazim and defeated the Philistines there. God did it, David exclaimed. He used me to burst through my enemies like a raging flood. So they named that place baal Perazim, which means the Lord who bursts through. The Philistines had abandoned their gods there, so David gave orders to burn them. But after a while, the Philistines returned and raided the valley again. And once again, David asked God what to do. Do not attack them straight on, God replied. Instead, circle around behind and attack them near the poplar trees. When you hear a sound like marching feet in the tops of the poplar trees, go out and attack. That will be the signal that God is moving ahead of you to strike down the Philistine army. So David did what God commanded, and they struck down the Philistine army all the way from Gibeon to Gezer. So David's fame spread everywhere, and the Lord caused all the nations to fear David. Chapter 15 
preparing to move the ark. David now built several buildings for himself in the city of David. He also prepared a place for the ark of God and set up a special tent for it. Then he commanded, No one except the Levites may carry the ark of God. The Lord has chosen them to carry the ark of the Lord and to serve him forever. Then David summoned all Israel to Jerusalem to bring the ark of the Lord to the place he had prepared for it. This is the number of the descendants of Aaron, the priests, and the Levites who were called together. From the clan of Kohath, 120, with Uriel as their leader. From the clan of Merari, 220, with Asahiah as their leader. From the clan of Gershon, 130, with Joel as their leader. From the descendants of Elizaphan, 200, with Shemaiah as their leader. From the descendants of Hebron, 80, with Eliel as their leader. From the descendants of Uzziel, 112, with Aminadab as their leader. Then David summoned the priests, Zadok and Abiathar, and these Levite leaders, Uriel, Asaiah, Joel, Shemaiah, Eliel, and Aminadab. He said to them, You are the leaders of the Levite families. You must purify yourselves and all your fellow Levites, so you can bring the ark of the Lord, the God of Israel, to the place I have prepared for it. Because you Levites did not carry the ark the first time, the anger of the Lord our God burst out against us. We failed to ask God how to move it properly. So the priests and the Levites purified themselves in order to bring the ark of the Lord, the God of Israel, to Jerusalem. Then the Levites carry the ark of God on their shoulders with its carrying poles, just as the Lord had instructed Moses. David also ordered the Levite leaders to appoint a choir of Levites who were singers and musicians to sing joyful songs to the accompaniment of harps, lyres, and cymbals. So the Levites appointed Heman, son of Joel, along with his fellow Levites, Asaph, son of Berechiah, and Ethan, son of Cushiah, from the clan of Mirari. The following men were chosen as their assistants, Zechariah, Jeaziel, Shemaramoth, Jehiel, Unai, Eliab, Benaiah, Maaseah, Mattathiah, Eliphalehu, Mikmia, and the gatekeepers Obed-Edom and Jeiel. The musicians, Heman, Asaph, and Ethan, were chosen to sound the bronze cymbals. Zechariah, Aziel, Shemaramoth, Jehiel, Unai, Eliab, Maaseah, and Benaiah were chosen to play the harps. Mattathiah, Eliphalehu, Mikmia, Obed-Edom, Jeiel, and Azaziah were chosen to play the lyres. Kenaniah, the head Levite, was chosen as the choir leader because of his skill. Berechiah and Elkanah were chosen to guard the ark. Shebaniah, Joshaphat, Nethanol, Amasai, Zechariah, Benaiah, and Eleazar, all of whom were priests, were chosen to blow the trumpets as they marched in front of the ark of God. Obed-Edom and Jehiah were chosen to guard the ark. Moving the ark to Jerusalem. Then David and the elders of Israel and the generals of the army went to the house of Obed-Edom to bring the Ark of the Lord's Covenant up to Jerusalem with a great celebration. And because God was clearly helping the Levites as they carried the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, they sacrificed seven bulls and seven rams. David was dressed in a robe of fine linen, as were all the Levites who carried the Ark, and also the singers and Kenaniah the choir leader. David was also wearing a priestly garment. So all Israel brought up the Ark of the Lord's Covenant with shouts of joy, the blowing of ram's horns and trumpets, the crashing of cymbals, and loud playing on harps and lyres. But as the Ark of the Lord's Covenant entered the city of David, Michael, the daughter of Saul, looked down from her window. When she saw King David skipping about and laughing with joy, she was filled with contempt for him. Chapter 16 They brought the ark of God and placed it inside the special tent David had prepared for it. And they presented burnt offerings and peace offerings to God. When he had finished his sacrifices, David blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Then he gave to every man and woman in all Israel a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins. David appointed the following Levites to lead the people in worship before the ark of the Lord, to invoke his blessings, to give thanks, and to praise the Lord, the God of Israel. Asaph, the leader of this group, sounded the cymbals. Second to him was Zechariah, followed by Jeiel, Shemiramoth, Jehiel, Mattathiah, Eliab, Benaiah, Obed-Edom, and Jeiel. They played the harps and lyres. 
The priests, Benaiah and Jehaziel, played the trumpets regularly before the Ark of God's Covenant. David's Song of Praise On that day, David gave to Asaph and his fellow Levites this song of thanksgiving to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. Sing to him, yes, sing his praises. Tell everyone about his wonderful deeds. Exalt in his holy name. Rejoice, you who worship the Lord. Search for the Lord and for his strength. Continually seek him. Remember the wonders he has performed, his miracles and the rulings he has given. You children of his servant Israel, you descendants of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His justice is seen throughout the land. Remember his covenant forever, the commitment he made to a thousand generations. This is the covenant he made with Abraham and the oath he swore to Isaac. He confirmed it to Jacob as a decree and to the people of Israel as a never-ending covenant. I will give you the land of Canaan as your special possession. He said this when you were few in number, a tiny group of strangers in Canaan. They wandered from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another, yet he did not let anyone oppress them. He warned kings on their behalf, Do not touch my chosen people, and do not hurt my prophets. Let the whole earth sing to the Lord. Each day proclaim the good news that he saves. Publish his glorious deeds among the nations. Tell everyone about the amazing things he does. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. The gods of other nations are mere idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty surround him. Strength and joy fill his dwelling. O nations of the world, recognize the Lord. Recognize that the Lord is glorious and strong. Give to the Lord the glory he deserves. Bring your offering and come into his presence. Worship the Lord in all his holy splendor. Let all the earth tremble before him. The world stands firm and cannot be shaken. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Tell all the nations the Lord reigns. Let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. Let the fields and their crops burst out with joy. Let the trees of the forest rustle with praise. For the Lord is coming to judge the earth. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Cry out, save us, O God of our salvation. Gather and rescue us from among the nations so we can thank your holy name and rejoice and praise you. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who lives from everlasting to everlasting. And all the people shouted, Amen, and praised the Lord. Worship at Jerusalem and Gibeon. David arranged for Asaph and his fellow Levites to serve regularly before the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, doing whatever needed to be done each day. This group included Obed-Edom, son of Jeduthun, Hosa, and 68 other Levites as gatekeepers. Meanwhile, David stationed Zadok the priest and his fellow priests at the tabernacle of the Lord at the place of worship in Gibeon, where they continued to minister before the Lord. They sacrificed the regular burnt offerings to the Lord each morning and evening on the altar set aside for that purpose, obeying everything written in the law of the Lord as he had commanded Israel. David also appointed Heman, Jeduthun, and the others chosen by name to give thanks to the Lord, for his faithful love endures forever. They used their trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments to accompany their songs of praise to God. And the sons of Jeduthun were appointed as gatekeepers. Then all the people returned to their homes, and David turned and went home to bless his own family. Chapter 17 The Lord's Covenant Promise to David When David was settled in his palace, he summoned Nathan the prophet. Look, David said, I am living in a beautiful cedar palace, but the Ark of the Lord's Covenant is out there under a tent. Nathan replied to David, Do whatever you have in mind, for God is with you. But that same night God said to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, This is what the Lord has declared. You are not the one to build a house for me to live in. I have never lived in a house from the day I brought the Israelites out of Egypt until this very day. My home has always been a tent, moving from one place to another in a tabernacle. 
Yet no matter where I have gone with the Israelites, I have never once complained to Israel's leaders, the shepherds of my people. I have never asked them, Why haven't you built me a beautiful cedar house? Now go and say to my servant David, This is what the Lord of heaven's armies has declared. I took you from tending sheep in the pasture and selected you to be the leader of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have destroyed all your enemies before your eyes. Now I will make your name as famous as anyone who has ever lived on the earth, and I will provide a homeland for my people Israel, planting them in a secure place where they will never be disturbed. Evil nations won't oppress them as they have done in the past, starting from the time I appointed judges to rule my people Israel, and I will defeat all your enemies. Furthermore, I declare that the Lord will build a house for you, a dynasty of kings. For when you die and join your ancestors, I will raise up one of your descendants, one of your sons, and I will make his kingdom strong. He is the one who will build a house, a temple for me, and I will secure his throne forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. I will never take my favor from him as I took it from the one who ruled before you. I will confirm him as king over my house and my kingdom for all time, and his throne will be secure forever. So Nathan went back to David and told him everything the Lord had said in this vision. David's Prayer of Thanks Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and prayed, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my family that you have brought me this far? And now, O oh God, in addition to everything else, you speak of giving your servant a lasting dynasty? You speak as though I were someone very great, O oh Lord God. What more can I say to you about the way you have honored me? You know what your servant is really like. For the sake of your servant, O oh Lord, and according to your will, you have done all these great things and have made them known. O oh Lord, there is no one like you. We have never even heard of another God like you. What other nation on earth is like your people Israel? What other nation, O God, have you redeemed from slavery to be your own people? You made a great name for yourself when you redeemed your people from Egypt. You performed awesome miracles and drove out the nations that stood in their way. You chose Israel to be your very own people forever, and you, O Lord, became their God. And now, O Lord, I am your servant. Do as you have promised concerning me and my family. May it be a promise that will last forever. And may your name be established and honored forever, so that everyone will say, The Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, is Israel's God. And may the house of your servant David continue before you forever. O oh my God, I have been bold enough to pray to you because you have revealed to your servant that you will build a house for him, a dynasty of kings. For you are God, O oh Lord, and you have promised these good things to your servant. And now it has pleased you to bless the house of your servant so that it will continue forever before you. For when you grant a blessing, O oh Lord, it is an eternal blessing. Chapter 18 David's military victories. After this, David defeated and subdued the Philistines by conquering Gath and its surrounding towns. David also conquered the land of Moab, and the Moabites who were spared became David's subjects and paid him tribute money. David also destroyed the forces of Hadadezer, king of Zobah, as far as Hamath, when Hadadezer marched out to strengthen his control along the Euphrates River. David captured 1,000 chariots, 7,000 charioteers, and 20,000 foot soldiers. He crippled all the chariot horses except enough for 100 chariots. When Arameans from Damascus arrived to help King Hadadezer, David killed 22,000 of them. Then he placed several army garrisons in Damascus, the Aramean capital, and the Arameans became David's subjects and paid him tribute money. So the Lord made David victorious wherever he went. David brought the gold shields of Hadadezer's officers to Jerusalem, along with a large amount of bronze from Hadadezer's towns of Teba and Kun. Later, Solomon melted the bronze and molded it into the great bronze basin called the sea, the pillars, and the various bronze articles used at the temple. When King Toy of Hamath heard that David had destroyed the entire army of King Hadadezer of Zobah, he sent his son Joram to congratulate King David for his successful campaign. Hadadezer and Toy had been enemies and were often at war. 
Joram presented David with many gifts of gold, silver, and bronze. King David dedicated all these gifts to the Lord, along with the silver and gold he had taken from the other nations, from Edom, Moab, Ammon, Philistia, and Amalek. Abishai, son of Zuriah, destroyed 18,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. He placed army garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became David's subjects. In fact, the Lord made David victorious wherever he went. So David reigned over all Israel and did what was just and right for all his people. Joab, son of Zeruiah, was commander of the army. Jehoshaphat, son of Ahilud, was the royal historian. Zadok, son of Ahitub, and Ahimelech, son of Abiathar, were the priests. Sireah was the court secretary. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, was captain of the king's bodyguard. And David's sons served as the king's chief assistants. Chapter 19 David Defeats the Ammonites Sometime after this, King Nahash of the Ammonites died, and his son Hanan became king. David said, I am going to show loyalty to Hanan because his father Nahash was always loyal to me. So David sent messengers to express sympathy to Hanan about his father's death. But when David's ambassadors arrived in the land of Ammon, the Ammonite commander said to Hanan, Do you really think these men are coming here to honor your father? No, David has sent them to spy out the land so they can come in and conquer it. So Hanan seized David's ambassadors and shaved them, cut off their robes at the buttocks, and sent them back to David in shame. When David heard what had happened to the men, he sent messengers to tell them, Stay at Jericho until your beards grow out, and then come back for they felt deep shame because of their appearance. When the people of Ammon realized how seriously they had angered David, Hanun and the Ammonites sent 75,000 pounds of silver to hire chariots and charioteers from Aram Nearim, Aram Meeka, and Zobah. They also hired 32,000 chariots and secured the support of the king of Meeka and his army. These forces camped at Medeba, where they were joined by the Ammonite troops that Hanun had recruited from his own towns. When David heard about this, he sent Joab and all his warriors to fight them. The Ammonite troops came out and drew up their battle lines at the entrance of the city, while the other kings positioned themselves to fight in the open fields. When Joab saw that he would have to fight on both the front and the rear, he chose some of Israel's elite troops and placed them under his personal command to fight the Arameans in the fields. He left the rest of the army under the command of his brother Abishai, who was to attack the Ammonites. If the Arameans are too strong for me, then come over and help me, Joab told his brother. And if the Ammonites are too strong for you, I will help you. Be courageous. Let us fight bravely for our people and the cities of our God. May the Lord's will be done. When Joab and his troops attacked, the Arameans began to run away. And when the Ammonites saw the Arameans running, they also ran from Abishai and retreated into the city. Then Joab returned to Jerusalem. The Arameans now realized that they were no match for Israel, so they sent messengers and summoned additional Aramean troops from the other side of the Euphrates River. These troops were under the command of Shobak, the commander of Hadadezer's forces. When David heard what was happening, he mobilized all Israel, crossed the Jordan River, and positioned his troops in battle formation. Then David engaged the Arameans in battle, and they fought against him. But again the Arameans fled from the Israelites, this time David's forces killed 7,000 charioteers and 40,000 foot soldiers, including Shobak, the commander of their army. When Hadadezer's allies saw that they had been defeated by Israel, they surrendered to David and became his subjects. After that, the Arameans were no longer willing to help the Ammonites. Chapter 20 David Captures Rabba in the spring of the year, when kings normally go out to war, Joab led the Israelite army in successful attacks against the land of the Ammonites. In the process, he laid siege to the city of Rabbah. However, David stayed behind in Jerusalem. When David arrived at Rabbah, he removed the crown from the king's head, and it was placed on his own head. The crown was made of gold and set with gems, and he found that it weighed 75 pounds. David took a vast amount of plunder from the city. He also made slaves of the people of Rabbah and forced them to labor with saws, iron picks, and iron axes. That is how David dealt with the people of all the Ammonite towns. Then David and all the army returned to Jerusalem. 
battles against Philistine giants. After this, war broke out with the Philistines at Gezer. As they fought, Sibachai from Husha killed Saph, a descendant of the giants, and so the Philistines were subdued. During another battle with the Philistines, Elhanan, son of Jair, killed Lamai, the brother of Goliath of Gath. The handle of Lamai's spear was as thick as a weaver's beam. In another battle with the Philistines at Gath, they encountered a huge man with six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, twenty-four in all, who was also a descendant of the giants. But when he defied and taunted Israel, he was killed by Jonathan, the son of David's brother Shimei. These Philistines were descendants of the giants of Gath, but David and his warriors killed them. Chapter 21 David takes a census. Satan rose up against Israel and caused David to take a census of the people of Israel. So David said to Joab and the commanders of the army, Take a census of all the people of Israel, from Beersheba in the south to Dan in the north, and bring me a report so I may know how many there are. But Joab replied, May the Lord increase the number of his people a hundred times over, but why, my lord the king, do you want to do this? Are they not all your servants? Why must you cause Israel to sin? But the king insisted that they take the census. So Joab traveled throughout all Israel to count the people. Then he returned to Jerusalem and reported the number of people to David. There were 1,100,000 warriors in all Israel who could handle a sword and 470,000 in Judah. But Joab did not include the tribes of Levi and Benjamin in the census because he was so distressed at what the king had made him do. Judgment for David's sin. God was very displeased with the census, and he punished Israel for it. Then David said to God, I have sinned greatly by taking this census. Please forgive my guilt for doing this foolish thing. Then the Lord spoke to Gad, David's seer. This was the message. Go and say to David, This is what the Lord says. I will give you three choices. Choose one of these punishments, and I will inflict it on you. So Gad came to David and said, These are the choices the Lord has given you. You may choose three years of famine, three months of destruction by the sword of your enemies, or three days of severe plague, as the angel of the Lord brings devastation throughout the land of Israel. Decide what answer I should give the Lord who sent me. I'm in a desperate situation, David replied to Gad. But let me fall into the hands of the Lord, for his mercy is very great. Do not let me fall into human hands. So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel, and 70,000 people died as a result. And God sent an angel to destroy Jerusalem. But just as the angel was preparing to destroy it, the Lord relented and said to the death angel, Stop, that is enough. At that moment, the angel of the Lord was standing by the threshing floor of Aruna, the Jebusite. David looked up and saw the angel of the Lord standing between heaven and earth, with his sword drawn, reaching out over Jerusalem. So David and the leaders of Israel put on burlap to show their deep distress, and fell face down on the ground. And David said to God, I am the one who called for this census. I am the one who has sinned and done wrong. But these people are as innocent as sheep. What have they done? O oh Lord my God, let your anger fall against me and my family, but do not destroy your people. David builds an altar. Then the angel of the Lord told Gad to instruct David to go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite. So David went up to do what the Lord had commanded him through Gad. Aruna, who was busy threshing wheat at the time, turned and saw the angel there. His four sons, who were with him, ran away and hid. When Aruna saw David approaching, he left his threshing floor and bowed before David with his face to the ground. David said to Aruna, Let me buy this threshing floor from you at its full price. Then I will build an altar to the Lord there, so that he will stop the plague. Take it, my lord the king. And use it as you wish, Arona said to David. I will give the oxen for the burnt offerings and the threshing boards for wood to build a fire on the altar and the wheat for the grain offering. I will give it all to you. But King David replied to Aruna, No, I insist on buying it for the full price. I will not take what is yours and give it to the Lord. I will not present burnt offerings that have cost me nothing. So David gave Aruna 600 pieces of gold in payment for the threshing floor. 
David built an altar there to the Lord and sacrificed burnt offerings and peace offerings. And when David prayed, the Lord answered him by sending fire from heaven to burn up the offering on the altar. Then the Lord spoke to the angel who put the sword back into its sheath. When David saw that the Lord had answered his prayer, he offered sacrifices there at Arunah's threshing floor. At that time, the tabernacle of the Lord and the altar of burnt offering that Moses had made in the wilderness were located at the place of worship in Gibeon. But David was not able to go there to inquire of God because he was terrified by the drawn sword of the angel of the Lord. Chapter 22 Then David said, This will be the location for the temple of the Lord God and the place of the altar for Israel's burnt offerings. Preparations for the temple. So David gave orders to call together the foreigners living in Israel, and he assigned them the task of preparing finished stone for building the temple of God. David provided large amounts of iron for the nails that would be needed for the doors in the gates and for the clamps, and he gave more bronze than could be weighed. He also provided innumerable cedar logs, for the men of Tyre and Sidon had brought vast amounts of cedar to David. David said, My son Solomon is still young and inexperienced, and since the temple to be built for the Lord must be a magnificent structure, famous and glorious throughout the world, I will begin making preparations for it now. So David collected vast amounts of building materials before his death. Then David sent for his son Solomon and instructed him to build a temple for the Lord, the God of Israel. My son, I wanted to build the temple to honor the name of the Lord my God, David told him. But the Lord said to me, You have killed many men in the battles you have fought, and since you have shed so much blood in my sight, you will not be the one to build a temple to honor my name. But you will have a son who will be a man of peace. I will give him peace with his enemies in all the surrounding lands. His name will be Solomon, and I will give peace and quiet to Israel during his reign. He is the one who will build a temple to honor my name. He will be my son, and I will be his father. And I will secure the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now, my son, may the Lord be with you and give you success as you follow his directions in building the temple of the Lord your God. And may the Lord give you wisdom and understanding that you may obey the law of the Lord your God as you rule over Israel. For you will be successful if you carefully obey the decrees and regulations that the Lord gave to Israel through Moses. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or lose heart. I have worked hard to provide materials for building the temple of the Lord, nearly 4,000 tons of gold, 40,000 tons of silver and so much iron and bronze that it cannot be weighed. I have also gathered timber and stone for the walls, though you may need to add more. You have a large number of skilled stonemasons and carpenters and craftsmen of every kind. You have expert goldsmiths and silversmiths and workers of bronze and iron. Now begin the work, and may the Lord be with you. Then David ordered all the leaders of Israel to assist Solomon in this project. The Lord your God is with you, he declared. He has given you peace with the surrounding nations. He has handed them over to me, and they are now subject to the Lord and his people. Now seek the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. Build the sanctuary of the Lord God so that you can bring the ark of the Lord's covenant and the holy vessels of God into the temple built to honor the Lord's name. Chapter 23 Duties of the Levites when David was an old man, he appointed his son Solomon to be king over Israel. David summoned all the leaders of Israel together with the priests and Levites. All the Levites who were 30 years old or older were counted, and the total came to 38,000. Then David said, From all the Levites, 24,000 will supervise the work at the temple of the Lord. Another 6,000 will serve as officials and judges. Another 4,000 will work as gatekeepers, and 4,000 will praise the Lord with the musical instruments I have made. Then David divided the Levites into divisions named after the clans descended from the three sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The Gershonites. The Gershonite family units were defined by their lines of descent from Libni and Shimei, the sons of Gershon. 
Three of the descendants of Libni were Jahil, the family leader, Zetham, and Joel. These were the leaders of the family of Libni. Three of the descendants of Shimei were Shelemoth, Haziel, and Haran. Four other descendants of Shimei were Jahath, Ziza, Jeush, and Beriah. Jahath was the family leader, and Ziza was next. Jayush and Beriah were counted as a single family because neither had many sons. The Kohathites. Four of the descendants of Kohath were Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel. The sons of Amram were Aaron and Moses. Aaron and his descendants were set apart to dedicate the most holy things, to offer sacrifices in the Lord's presence, to serve the Lord, and to pronounce blessings in his name forever. As for Moses, the man of God, his sons were included with the tribe of Levi. The sons of Moses were Gershom and Eliezer. The descendants of Gershom included Shebuel, the family leader. Eliezer had only one son, Rehabiah, the family leader. Rehabiah had numerous descendants. The descendants of Izhar included Shelemoth, the family leader. The descendants of Hebron included Jeriah, the family leader, Amariah, the second, Jehaziel the third, and Jechamim the fourth. The descendants of Uziel included Micah, the family leader, and Ishiah the second. The Merarites. The descendants of Merari included Malai and Mushai. The sons of Malai were Eleazar and Kish. Eleazar died with no sons, only daughters. His daughters married their cousins, the sons of Kish. Three of the descendants of Mushai were Malai, Eder, and Jeremiah. These were the descendants of Levi by clans, the leaders of their family groups registered carefully by name. Each had to be 20 years old or older to qualify for service in the house of the Lord. For David said, The Lord, the God of Israel, has given us peace, and he will always live in Jerusalem. Now the Levites will no longer need to carry the tabernacle and its furnishings from place to place. In accordance with David's final instructions, all the Levites 20 years old or older were registered for service. The work of the Levites was to assist the priests, the descendants of Aaron, as they served at the house of the Lord. They also took care of the courtyards and side rooms, helped perform the ceremonies of purification, and served in many other ways in the house of God. They were in charge of the sacred bread that was set out on the table, the choice flour for the grain offerings, the wafers made without yeast, the cakes cooked in olive oil, and the other mixed breads. They were also responsible to check all the weights and measures. And each morning and evening they stood before the Lord to sing songs of thanks and praise to him. They assisted with the burnt offerings that were presented to the Lord on Sabbath days, at new moon celebrations, and at all the appointed festivals. The required number of Levites served in the Lord's presence at all times, following all the procedures they had been given. And so, under the supervision of the priests, the Levites watched over the tabernacle in the temple and faithfully carried out their duties of service at the house of the Lord. Chapter 24 Duties of the Priests This is how Aaron's descendants, the priests, were divided into groups for service. The sons of Aaron were Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died before their father, and they had no sons. So only Eleazar and Ithamar were left to carry on as priests. With the help of Zadok, who was a descendant of Eleazar, and of Ahimelech, who was a descendant of Ithamar, David divided Aaron's descendants into groups according to their various duties. Eleazar's descendants were divided into sixteen groups, and Ithamar's into eight, for there were more family leaders among the descendants of Eleazar. All tasks were assigned to the various groups by means of sacred lots, so that no preference would be shown. For there were many qualified officials serving God in the sanctuary from among the descendants of both Eleazar and Ithamar. Shimea, son of Nethanel, a Levite, acted as secretary and wrote down the names and assignments in the presence of the king, the officials, Zadok the priest, Ahimelech, son of Abiathar, and the family leaders of the priests and Levites. The descendants of Eleazar and Ithamar took turns casting lots. The first lot fell to Jehoiarib. The second lot fell to Jediah. The third lot fell to Haram. The fourth lot fell to Seorim. The fifth lot fell to Melchijah. The sixth lot fell to Mijamin. The seventh lot fell to Hekos. The eighth lot fell to Abijah. The ninth lot fell to Jeshua. The tenth lot fell to Shechaniah. The eleventh lot 
fell to Eliashib. The twelfth lot fell to Jacob. The thirteenth lot fell to Hupa. The fourteenth lot fell to Jeshabib. The fifteenth lot fell to Bilga. The sixteenth lot fell to Immer. The seventeenth lot fell to Hezer. The eighteenth lot fell to Hapizes. The nineteenth lot fell to Pethahiah. The twentieth lot fell to Jehezgel. The twenty-first lot fell to Jacob. The twenty-second lot fell to Gamul. The twenty-third lot fell to Deliah. The twenty-fourth lot fell to Meaziah. Each group carried out its appointed duties in the house of the Lord according to the procedures established by their ancestor Aaron in obedience to the commands of the Lord, the God of Israel. Family leaders among the Levites. These were the other family leaders descended from Levi. From the descendants of Amram, the leader was Shabul. From the descendants of Shabul, the leader was Jediah. From the descendants of Rehabiah, the leader was Ishiah. From the descendants of Hizhar, the leader was Shelemith. From the descendants of Shelemith, the leader was Jahath. From the descendants of Hebron, Jeriah was the leader. Amariah was second. Jehaziel was third, and Jechamim was fourth. From the descendants of Uziel, the leader was Micah. From the descendants of Micah, the leader was Shamer, along with Ishiah, the brother of Micah. From the descendants of Ishiah, the leader was Zechariah. From the descendants of Merari, the leaders were Malai and Mushai. From the descendants of Jeaziah, the leader was Bino. From the descendants of Merari through Jeaziah, the leaders were Bino, Shoham, Zakur, and Ibri. From the descendants of Malai, the leader was Eleazar, though he had no sons. From the descendants of Kish, the leader was Jeremiah. From the descendants of Mushai, the leaders were Malai, Eder, and Jeremoth. These were the descendants of Levi in their various families. Like the descendants of Aaron, they were assigned to their duties by means of sacred lots. Without regard to age or rank, lots were drawn in the presence of King David, Zadok, Ahimelech, and the family leaders of the priests and the Levites. Chapter twenty-five. Duties of the musicians. David and the army commanders then appointed men from the families of Asaph, Heman, and Jeduthun to proclaim God's messages to the accompaniment of lyres, harps, and cymbals. Here is a list of their names and their work. From the sons of Asaph, there were Zakur, Joseph, Nathaniah, and Ezarel. They worked under the direction of their father Asaph, who proclaimed God's messages by the king's orders. From the sons of Jeduthun, there were Gedaliah, Zerai, Jeshaiah, Shimei, Hashabiah, and Mattathiah, six in all. They worked under the direction of their father Jeduthun, who proclaimed God's messages to the accompaniment of the lyre. Offering thanks and praise to the Lord. From the sons of Heman, there were Bukiah, Mattaniah, Uziel, Shubael, Jeremoth, Hananiah, Hanani, Eliatha, Gedaltai, Romantiezer, Jashbekasha, Malothi, Hathir, and Mehazioth. All these were the sons of Heman, the king's seer, for God had honored him with fourteen sons and three daughters. All these men were under the direction of their fathers as they made music at the house of the Lord. Their responsibilities included the playing of cymbals, harps, and lyres at the house of God. Asaph, Jeduthun, and Heman reported directly to the king. They and their families were all trained in making music before the Lord, and each of them, two hundred and eighty-eight in all, was an accomplished musician. The musicians were appointed to their term of service by means of sacred lots, without regard to whether they were young or old, teacher or student. The first lot fell to Joseph of the Asaph clan and twelve of his sons and relatives. The second lot fell to Gedaliah and twelve of his sons and relatives. The third lot fell to Zakur and twelve of his sons and relatives. The fourth lot fell to Zerai and twelve of his sons and relatives. The fifth lot fell to Nathaniah and twelve of his sons and relatives. The sixth lot fell to Bukiah and twelve of his sons and relatives. The seventh lot fell to Asarela and twelve of his sons and relatives. The eighth lot fell to Jeshaiah and twelve of his sons and relatives. The ninth lot fell to Mattaniah and twelve of his sons and relatives. The tenth lot fell to Shimei and twelve of his sons and relatives. The eleventh lot 
fell to Uziel and twelve of his sons and relatives. The twelfth lot fell to Hashabiah and twelve of his sons and relatives. The thirteenth lot fell to Shubael and twelve of his sons and relatives. The fourteenth lot fell to Mattathiah and twelve of his sons and relatives. The fifteenth lot fell to Jeremoth and twelve of his sons and relatives. The sixteenth lot fell to Hananiah and twelve of his sons and relatives. The seventeenth lot fell to Josh Bekesha and twelve of his sons and relatives. The eighteenth lot fell to Hananiah and twelve of his sons and relatives. The nineteenth lot fell to Malathi and twelve of his sons and relatives. The twentieth lot fell to Eliatha and twelve of his sons and relatives. The twenty-first lot fell to Hathor and twelve of his sons and relatives. The twenty-second lot fell to Gedaltai and twelve of his sons and relatives. The twenty-third lot fell to Mahazioth and twelve of his sons and relatives. The twenty-fourth lot fell to Ramamti Ezer and twelve of his sons and relatives. Chapter 26 Duties of the Gatekeepers These are the divisions of the gatekeepers. From the Korahites there was Meshelamiah, son of Kor, of the family of Abiasaph. The sons of Meshelamiah were Zechariah the oldest, Jediel the second, Zebediah the third, Jathniel the fourth, Elam the fifth, Jehohanan the sixth, and Elioenai the seventh. The sons of Obed-Edom, also gatekeepers, were Shimeah the oldest, Jehozabad the second, Joah the third, Sekor the fourth, Nethanel the fifth, Amiel the sixth, Issachar the seventh, and Peulathai the eighth. God had richly blessed Obed-Edom. Obed-Edom's son Shimea had sons with great ability who earned positions of great authority in the clan. Their names were Othni, Raphael, Obed, and Elzabad. Their relatives Elihu and Semachiah were also very capable men. All of these descendants of Obed-Edom, including their sons and grandsons, 62 of them in all, were very capable men, well qualified for their work. Meshelamiah's 18 sons and relatives were also very capable men. Hosa of the Mirari clan appointed Shimri as the leader among his sons, though he was not the oldest. His other sons included Hilkiah the second, Tebaliah the third, and Zechariah the fourth. Hosa's sons and relatives, who served as gatekeepers, numbered 13 in all. These divisions of the gatekeepers were named for their family leaders, and like the other Levites, they served at the house of the Lord. They were assigned by families for guard duty at the various gates, without regard to age or training, for it was all decided by means of sacred lots. The responsibility for the east gate went to Meshelamiah and his group. The north gate was assigned to his son Zechariah, a man of unusual wisdom. The south gate went to Obed-Edom, and his sons were put in charge of the storehouse. Shuppam and Hosa were assigned the west gate and the gateway leading up to the temple. Guard duties were divided evenly. Six Levites were assigned each day to the east gate, four to the north gate, four to the south gate, and two pairs at the storehouse. Six were assigned each day to the west gate, four to the gateway leading up to the temple, and two to the courtyard. These were the divisions of the gatekeepers from the clans of Korah and Mirera. Treasurers and other officials. Other Levites, led by Ahijah, were in charge of the treasuries of the house of God and the treasuries of the gifts dedicated to the Lord. From the family of Libni in the clan of Gershon, Jehiel was the leader. The sons of Jehiel, Zetham, and his brother Joel were in charge of the treasuries of the house of the Lord. These are the leaders that descended from Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel. From the clan of Amram, Shubal was a descendant of Gershom, son of Moses. He was the chief officer of the treasuries. His relatives through Eliezer were Rehabiah, Jesheah, Joram, Zikri, and Shelamoth. Shelamoth and his relatives were in charge of the treasuries containing the gifts that King David, the family leaders, and the generals and captains and other officers of the army had dedicated to the Lord. These men dedicated some of the plunder they had gained in battle to maintain the house of the Lord. Shelamoth and his relatives also cared for the gifts dedicated to the Lord by Samuel the seer, Saul, son of Kish, Abner, son of Ner, and Joab, son of Zuriah. All the other dedicated gifts were in their care, too. From the clan of Izhar came Kenaniah. He and his sons were given administrative responsibilities over Israel as officials and judges. From the clan of Hebron came Hashabiah. 
He and his relatives, 1,700 capable men, were put in charge of the Israelite lands west of the Jordan River. They were responsible for all matters related to the things of the Lord and the service of the king in that area. Also from the clan of Hebron came Jeriah, who was the leader of the Hebronites according to the genealogical records. In the fortieth year of David's reign, a search was made in the records, and capable men from the clan of Hebron were found at Jazer in the land of Gilead. There were 2,700 capable men among the relatives of Jeriah. King David sent them to the east side of the Jordan River and put them in charge of the tribes of Reuben and Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh. They were responsible for all matters related to God and to the king. Chapter 27 Military Commanders and Divisions This is the list of Israelite generals and captains and their officers who served the king by supervising the army divisions that were on duty each month of the year. Each division served for one month and had 24,000 troops. Joshabim, son of Zabdiel, was commander of the first division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the first month. He was a descendant of Piraz and was in charge of all the army officers for the first month. Dodai, a descendant of Ahoa, was commander of the second division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the second month. Mikloth was his chief officer. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada the priest, was commander of the third division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the third month. This was the Benaiah who commanded David's elite military group, known as the Thirty. His son Amizabad was his chief officer. Asahel, the brother of Joab, was commander of the fourth division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the fourth month. Asahel was succeeded by his son Zebediah. Shama the Israelite was commander of the 5th Division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the 5th month. Ira, son of Ikish from Tekoa, was commander of the 6th Division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the 6th month. Helaz, a descendant of Ephraim from Pelan, was commander of the 7th Division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the 7th month. Sebekiah, a descendant of Zerah from Husha, was commander of the 8th Division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the 8th month. Abizer from Anathoth in the territory of Benjamin was commander of the 9th Division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the 9th month. Maharai, a descendant of Zerah from Natofa, was commander of the 10th Division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the 10th month. Benaiah from Pirathon in Ephraim was commander of the 11th Division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the 11th month. Helid, a descendant of Othniel from Natofa, was commander of the 12th Division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the 12th month. Leaders of the Tribes The following were the tribes of Israel and their leaders. Reuben, Elizer, son of Zikri. Simeon, Shephatiah, son of Meekah. Levi, Hashabiah, son of Kemuel, Aaron the priests, Zadok, Judah, Elihu, a brother of David, Issachar, Amri, son of Michael, Zebulun, Ishmael, son of Obadiah, Naphtali, Jeremoth, son of Azrael, Ephraim, Hoshea, son of Azaziah, Manasseh, west, Joel, son of Padeah, Manasseh in Gilead, East, Ido, son of Zechariah. Benjamin, Jaziel, son of Abner. Dan, Azarel, son of Jeroham. These were the leaders of the tribes of Israel. When David took his census, he did not count those who were younger than 20 years of age, because the Lord had promised to make the Israelites as numerous as the stars in heaven. Joab, son of Zuriah, began the census but never finished it, because the anger of God fell on Israel. The total number was never recorded in King David's official records. Officials of David's Kingdom Asmaveth, son of Adil, was in charge of the palace treasuries. Jonathan, son of Uzziah, was in charge of the regional treasuries throughout the towns, villages, and fortresses of Israel. Ezri, son of Kelub, was in charge of the field workers who farmed the king's lands. Shimei, from Ramah, was in charge of the king's vineyards. Zabdi from Shephem was responsible for the grapes and the supplies of wine. 
Bale Hanan from Geter was in charge of the king's olive groves and sycamore fig trees in the foothills of Judah. Joash was responsible for the supplies of olive oil. Shitrei from Sharon was in charge of the cattle on the Sharon plain. Shaphat, son of Adli, was responsible for the cattle in the valleys. Obel the Ishmaelite was in charge of the camels. Jediah from Meranoth was in charge of the donkeys. Jazes the Hagrite was in charge of the king's flocks of sheep and goats. All these officials were overseers of King David's property. Jonathan, David's uncle, was a wise counselor to the king, a man of great insight and a scribe. Jehiel the Hakmonite was responsible for teaching the king's sons. Ahithophel was the royal advisor. Hushai the Archite was the king's friend. Ahithophel was succeeded by Jehoiada, son of Benaiah, and by Abiathar. Joab was commander of the king's army. Chapter 28 David's Instructions to Solomon David summoned all the officials of Israel to Jerusalem, the leaders of the tribes, the commanders of the army divisions, the other generals and captains, the overseers of the royal property and livestock, the palace officials, the mighty men, and all the other brave warriors in the kingdom. David rose to his feet and said, My brothers and my people, it was my desire to build the temple where the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, God's footstool, could rest permanently. I made the necessary preparations for building it, but God said to me, You must not build the temple to honor my name, for you are a warrior and have shed much blood. Yet the Lord, the God of Israel, has chosen me from among all my father's family to be king over Israel forever. For he has chosen the tribe of Judah to rule. And from among the families of Judah, he chose my father's family. And from among my father's sons, the Lord was pleased to make me king over all Israel. And from among my sons, for the Lord has given me many, he chose Solomon to succeed me on the throne of Israel and to rule over the Lord's kingdom. He said to me, Your son Solomon will build my temple and its courtyards, for I have chosen him as my son, and I will be his father. And if he continues to obey my commands and regulations, as he does now, I will make his kingdom last forever. So now, with God as our witness, and in the sight of all Israel, the Lord's assembly, I give you this charge. Be careful to obey all the commands of the Lord your God, so that you may continue to possess this good land and leave it to your children as a permanent inheritance. And Solomon, my son, Learn to know the God of your ancestors intimately. Worship and serve him with your whole heart and a willing mind. For the Lord sees every heart and knows every plan and thought. If you seek him, you will find him. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. So take this seriously. The Lord has chosen you to build a temple as his sanctuary. Be strong and do the work. Then David gave Solomon the plans for the temple and its surroundings, including the entry room, the storerooms, the upstairs rooms, the inner rooms, and the inner sanctuary, which was the place of atonement. David also gave Solomon all the plans he had in mind for the courtyards of the Lord's temple, the outside rooms, the treasuries, and the rooms for the gifts dedicated to the Lord. The king also gave Solomon the instructions concerning the work of the various divisions of priests and Levites in the temple of the Lord. And he gave specifications for the items in the temple that were to be used for worship. David gave instructions regarding how much gold and silver should be used to make the items needed for service. He told Solomon the amount of gold needed for the gold lampstands and lamps, and the amount of silver for the silver lampstands and lamps, depending on how each would be used. He designated the amount of gold for the table on which the bread of the presence would be placed, and the amount of silver for other tables. David also designated the amount of gold for the solid gold meat hooks used to handle the sacrificial meat and for the basins, pitchers, and dishes, as well as the amount of silver for every dish. He designated the amount of refined gold for the altar of incense. Finally, he gave him a plan for the Lord's chariot, the gold cherubim whose wings were stretched out over the Ark of the Lord's Covenant. Every part of this plan, David told Solomon, was given to me in writing from the hand of the Lord. Then David continued, Be strong and courageous and do the work. Don't be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord God, my God, is with you 
He will not fail you or forsake you. He will see to it that all the work related to the temple of the Lord is finished correctly. The various divisions of priests and Levites will serve in the temple of God. Others with skills of every kind will volunteer, and the officials and the entire nation are at your command. Chapter 29 Gifts for Building the Temple Then King David turned to the entire assembly and said, My son Solomon, whom God has clearly chosen as the next king of Israel, is still young and inexperienced. The work ahead of him is enormous, for the temple he will build is not for mere mortals. It is for the Lord God himself. Using every resource at my command, I have gathered as much as I could for building the temple of my God. Now there is enough gold, silver, bronze, iron and wood, as well as great quantities of onyx, other precious stones, costly jewels, and all kinds of fine stone and marble. And now, because of my devotion to the temple of my God, I am giving all of my own private treasures of gold and silver to help in the construction. This is in addition to the building materials I have already collected for his holy temple. I am donating more than 112 tons of gold from Ophir, and 262 tons of refined silver to be used for overlaying the walls of the buildings and for the other gold and silver work to be done by the craftsmen. Now then, who will follow my example and give offerings to the Lord today? Then the family leaders, the leaders of the tribes of Israel, the generals and captains of the army, and the king's administrative officers all gave willingly. For the construction of the temple of God, they gave about 188 tons of gold, 10,000 gold coins, 375 tons of silver, 675 tons of bronze, and 3,750 tons of iron. They also contributed numerous precious stones, which were deposited in the treasury of the house of the Lord under the care of Jehiel, a descendant of Gershon. The people rejoiced over the offerings, for they had given freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord, and King David was filled with joy. David's Prayer of Praise Then David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly. O Lord, the God of our ancestor Israel, may you be praised forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Everything in the heavens and on earth is yours, O Lord, and this is your kingdom. We adore you as the one who is over all things. Wealth and honor come from you alone, for you rule over everything. Power and might are in your hand, and at your discretion people are made great and given strength. O our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we could give anything to you? Everything we have has come from you, and we give you only what you first gave us. We are here for only a moment, visitors and strangers in the land as our ancestors were before us. Our days on earth are like a passing shadow, gone so soon, without a trace. O Lord our God, even this material we have gathered to build a temple to honor your holy name comes from you. It all belongs to you. I know, my God, that you examine our hearts and rejoice when you find integrity there. You know I have done all this with good motives, and I have watched your people offer their gifts willingly and joyously. O Lord, the God of our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, make your people always want to obey you. See to it that their love for you never changes. Give my son Solomon the wholehearted desire to obey all your commands, laws, and decrees, and to do everything necessary to build this temple for which I have made these preparations. Then David said to the whole assembly, Give praise to the Lord your God. And the entire assembly praised the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and they bowed low and knelt before the Lord and the king. Solomon named his king. The next day they brought 1,000 bulls, 1,000 rams, and 1,000 male lambs as burnt offerings to the Lord. They also brought liquid offerings and many other sacrifices on behalf of all Israel. They feasted and drank in the Lord's presence with great joy that day. And again they crowned David's son Solomon as their new king. 
They anointed him before the Lord as their leader, and they anointed Zadok as priest. So Solomon took the throne of the Lord in place of his father David, and he succeeded in everything, and all Israel obeyed him. All the officials, the warriors, and the sons of King David pledged their loyalty to King Solomon. And the Lord exalted Solomon in the sight of all Israel, and he gave Solomon greater royal splendor than any king in Israel before him. Summary of David's Reign So David, son of Jesse, reigned over all Israel. He reigned over Israel for forty years, seven of them in Hebron and thirty-three in Jerusalem. He died at a ripe old age, having enjoyed long life, wealth, and honor. Then his son Solomon ruled in his place. All the events of King David's reign from beginning to end are written in the record of Samuel the seer, the record of Nathan the prophet, and the record of Gad the seer. These accounts include the mighty deeds of his reign and everything that happened to him and to Israel and to all the surrounding kingdoms.